Hi everybody, today I'm starting the React.js tutorial by creating an app with Wita front-end tooling. But first, a short introduction. What is React? React is an open-source JavaScript library used for building user interfaces. You can check official documentation on react.dev. And uh, do you know what is the best way to learn React.js? Well, I asked ChatGPT, and here are the short answers. Master JavaScript fundamentals. Of course, you need to know some JavaScript because it's a JavaScript library. Start with official documentation on react.dev and uh, also take online courses and tutorials, build small projects, follow along with YouTube tutorials and the last one, consistent practice. And I agree with most of the answers. In my opinion, you need practice and can start with simple small projects, increasing the complexity along the way. And what do you need to know to start building in React? I'll answer by using the to-do list application that I'm going to build during the course. As you know, you need some JavaScript knowledge, like ES6, arrays, and objects, JavaScript, and a task. And uh, do you know some JavaScript? Perfect. I'm making this uh, task as done. And uh, also, you need some CSS. And uh, have you tried adding CSS? Great, it's done. And uh, HTML. Do you know some text in HTML? Wonderful. And uh, so, next, JS. Hmm. Actually, we don't need next.js, removing Z. And React. We are learning React right now. Great. And now we can start creating a project. What do you need to create a new with a React project? You need Node.js and npm install. You can download it on nodejs.org. And also you need some terminal and code editor. I use Visual Studio Code. I launched my Visual Studio Code, opened React app folder. And uh, by the way, you can open any folder with file open folder. And uh, to create a new Vita project, I need to run new terminal and run command npm create Vita as latest. Probably it will propose you to install some Vita dependencies and uh, I need to provide my project name and uh, I'm going to print to do a list. And uh, I need to select framework with arrow keys and uh, I'm, I will select React and uh, so I'm going to select JavaScript and uh, the project was created. Now uh, you have tips, you can, you can navigate to project with CD to do list and uh, now I can install dependencies with command npm install and uh, while dependencies are installed uh, I can open my folder and take a look what we have. We have a uh, beta config and uh, currently I'm not going to modify it. Also have a readme file. I can just remove this and uh, print uh, some to do a list. And uh, I can adjust it further. And uh, as you can see, the dependencies were installed. And now I can run command npm run dev. And, uh, my dev server was launched and uh, I can click on the link and see my application. And uh, we have some basic application. I can increase count, uh, but uh, I'm going to remove all this auto-generated code. And uh, let's take a look what we have. Else, uh, we have a package JSON file. It's a JavaScript JSON object with key and value. We have name, version, and uh, also we have scripts inside. We used a dev script uh, to launch uh, our dev server. Also, we have some build script and um, uh, some other scripts. And also, we have dependencies. Uh, for dependencies, uh, there are React and React Doom and some dev dependencies. And when we run npm install, the dependencies were installed and uh, they were installed uh, in node modules. You can check uh, there are. Uh, a lot of uh, files and uh, so you need to know that uh, the dependencies are in node modules. 
and uh, also we have package log file. It contains some descriptions about our dependencies, and uh, we don't need it either. And uh, index HTML is important file. Uh, first of all, we can change title to to do list up. I'm going to save it and let's check. As you can see, our title was changed, and uh, we have uh, inside body we have a root element and uh, also script that pointers uh, to source main.js.x. And I opened uh, this main.js.x file and uh, let's take a look what we have inside. We have import uh, for React and React Doom libraries. Also, we have import for app uh, component and uh, import for index.css files. And uh, as you can see, we have React Doom and uh, it calls create root function. And uh, inside uh, these functions, uh, we pass uh, document get element by ID uh, and uh, it uh, passed uh, our root element uh, inside uh, Doom to our create root and uh, then we called function render. And uh, what will be inside uh, this function uh, will be rendered uh, by React using React Doom. So, and uh, currently we're interested uh, in app component and uh, I just uh, navigated to that component and now I can remove most of the code. I don't need this state for now. And uh, also I can remove all this auto-generated code and uh, write my own code. I'm going to write h1 tag and just hello world and save. And just remove that. And uh, let's take a look and can hide this. And uh, I'm going to take a look. As you can see, we have our hello world text. And uh, I can add more text like h2, my first React app. And uh, I saved it. I checked we have our my first React app. And now I'm going to adjust styles. As you can see, uh, as you can see, this uh, index uh, CSS was imported inside main and it contains some basic styles, but we don't need them. I'm going to remove the styles for links and also for buttons of the styles. Just removing them. Okay, and also we can remove this media styles from links and buttons. And uh, as you can see, we have H1. Uh, we can change some color. Uh, let it be some, I don't know, blue. And uh, let's check. Okay, we have a uh, blue hello world and our styles work. And now I'm going to navigate to app CSS and remove all this auto generated styles, probably except root element. And uh, inside index CSS, I can remove this place items center. And uh, let's check. As you can see, now the hello world text are on the at the top and uh, we can remove this react logo just delete it and uh, also we have some vita logo i'm going to replace it with my logo and uh, i need to adjust index html to provide my logo i'm going to save it and check what we have and uh, as you can see, the logo was changed. And uh, that's all what I have for the first part of the course. If you liked the video, subscribe to my DevWeb app channel. In this lesson, we'll learn about the JSX in React. What is JSX? JSX, which stands for JavaScript XML, is a syntax extension for JavaScript that is commonly used with React to describe what the UI should look like. It allows developers to write HTML-like code directly within JavaScript, which can then be transformed into React elements. What are the basic roles of JSX? Each uh, JSX expression must return a single parent element. If you need multiple root elements, you should wrap them in a single enclosing tag, often a div or a React fragment. In JSX, attributes follow camel case naming conventions which align with JavaScript's standards naming practices. Uh, this includes properties like class name and uh, HTML4. You can embed uh, JavaScript expressions with JSX by wrapping them in curly braces. 
This allows dynamic data to be included in the JSX markup. JSX requires that tags without children be self-closed, similar to XML. Let's take a look at our code. I opened the code from previous lesson and uh, we have a app functional component and uh, inside the return we have our JSX. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, two elements, H1 and H2. And uh, according to JSX rules, uh, we need to add some tag, parent tag. And uh, here is a React fragment. Uh, we can add import React. And uh, basically, it's a React component, React fragment. And also, we can close it with React fragment. And uh, I'm going to save it. And uh, as you can see, nothing was changed. And uh, we can write it uh, in short version. Under the hood, JSX is transformed into JavaScript functional calls. This transformation is usually handled by tools like Babel during the build process. Uh, but now uh, I'm going to write uh, this uh, code without JSX. But uh, I want to change it a bit at div and with class name container, container and uh, add some ID. Main. Okay. And uh, I need to close this stack. And uh, now I'm going to comment out this code and uh, return my JavaScript code. And uh, I'm going to use React and uh, function create element inside React. And, uh, and uh, we need to provide the name of our type input, the name of uh, our element. And uh, also, then we need to provide our props and uh, all attributes. It will be class name and uh, it's an object and we need container as we have uh, for our div and uh, also we need to add id and uh, we have id main and uh, now we can pass uh, all our children and uh, we have h1 and uh, h2 text as children and uh, we need to also call function react, react create element for h1 and h2 text and uh, i'm going to do it it will be react react create create element and uh, for h1 tag and uh, we don't have any properties props and uh, as children we have just plain text and uh, it will be hello world and uh, also the same react create element we need to for our h2 tag but we need to change text and uh, I'm going to save it and check. Uh, as you can see, nothing was changed. And uh, I'm, I can add some text in React Create App or without JSX. And uh, as you can see, we have H2 text, tag and uh, without JSX. And uh, now you can remove all this. It was just in learning purposes. The next rule is that uh, you need to use camel case uh, for your attributes and uh, you need to use class name like this instead of class in HTML. And uh, the next rule is uh, that you can use um, curly braces to uh, add JavaScript code. Let me add const name, it will be John. And, uh, I can use this name inside my JSX with curly braces and just provide name. And, uh, let's save and check. And uh, as you can see, we have hello John. And uh, also, I can use some function to uppercase. It's a function. And uh, we have John in uppercase. And uh, also, you need to use some self closing text for elements like input. As you can see, we have self closing tag here and uh, also for image. Let's build simple JSX for our to do list project. I'm going to remove Z and also we don't need Z and uh, also this name. And uh, I'm going to change my H2 tag to 
to do list. Enter at div div list class name container container and close div. And uh, now we can add some text like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, like we did in first lesson. And uh, I'm going to add several divs with class name task row. Task row. And uh, provide text HTML. And uh, so I need these divs for CSS, JavaScript. JavaScript and React React JS and let's check what we have. Okay, we have our H to tag and uh, our to do list. And uh, now we can add some styles, some basic styles for our class task row. And uh, I'm going to make it display flex. Flex and uh, add some padding like 0 0.3 RAM and uh, 0 0.5 RAM for left right and uh, margin 0 0.2 RAM for all sides and uh, also let's add border, 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 button. And uh, it will be one pixels, one pixel solid, solid gray. And let's check what we have. As you can see, the styles were changed. Uh, we have our border bottom and uh, our padings and margins. And uh, now we can add completed class name to complete our task. I'm going to add so, com Deleted to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And uh, let's add styles for that. And the uh, styles will be text, decoration, just line through. And let's change color to gray. And uh, it will be that. And let's check. As you can see, the styles are changed. Uh, we have uh, cross text and uh, the color was changed. And uh, that's all what I have for this lesson. If you like the video, subscribe to my DevWeb app channel. In this lesson, we'll learn about components and props in React. In React, a component is a fundamental building block for constructing user interfaces. Components are reusable, self-contained pieces of code that describe a part of the UI and how it should behave. Each component can manage its own state and receive inputs, called props. React components can be categorized into two types, functional components and class components. Functional components are defined as JavaScript functions that take props as an argument and return React elements. Class components are not used much anymore for new projects. You could see them in some legacy code. We will work only with functional components. I opened my Visual Studio Code and uh, as you can see, we have uh, here a code from our previous lesson. And uh, here is an uh, app component, functional component, and uh, it uh, returns a uh, JSX or to-do list. And uh, now I'm going to create a functional component for my to-do list. First of all, I need to create some folder inside my SLC and uh, I'll create folder components, components and uh, I need two files one for to do a list JSX. Uh, I'll place my functional component and JSX here and uh, the second file will be to do list CSS for my styles. And uh, I can create function, function to do list. And I will return some JSX return. And uh, I'm just, I will just copy paste the code from my app. And I'll paste it here. 
And uh, now we can add export for our functional component. We can use default export, export default, and to do list. And now we can import our component in our app JSX file using import to do list. And uh, now we can just add our component to our code. It will be just like tag and will self closing. And uh, let's check what we have. As you can see, we have our to do list. And uh, also, I need to move the styles because uh, currently we have our styles for our to do list in our app CSS. And uh, I'm going to just place them inside my to do list CSS. Okay. And uh, as you can see, uh, we used default import here. And uh, here we can just uh, add some new name to do not list, to do tasks, and uh, use this component here. And let's check. As you can see, we have our to do list, but we don't have our styles. And uh, that's uh, because I forgot to import them in my to do list JSX. And uh, let's do it. Import from my root to do list CSS. And let's check again. Okay, the styles are here. And uh, we used a default export, and uh, we can change the name here. And we used a default export here, but uh, we can use named export. And I uh, just can write export function. Uh, but uh, that will not work in our app JSX. Let's take a look. And uh, as you can see, uh, we don't have anything. And uh, we need to provide uh, exactly the same name and use curly braces. And uh, now it should work. And I'm going to change it here and refresh the page. And uh, as you can see, we have our JSX. And uh, what is the difference between this export? Exports are uh, named uh, export uh, is used when we have several components or functions, constants. I'll show you export function and let it be welcome. Welcome. And uh, the function will return some JSX, return h1 tag and like welcome. Welcome, John. And uh, so we can import uh, this function, functional component, inside our ArcGSX and uh, add it to our app. And uh, we need a React fragment here uh, because uh, we are going to use two element elements. And uh, also, component will be welcome. Welcome and close. And now let's check. As you can see, we have our welcome John and our to-do list component. And uh, you can combine components uh, inside uh, other code and uh, uh, make your UI. Let's talk about props in React. In React, props stored for properties are read-only attributes that are used to pass data from parent components to child components. They are a fundamental part of React's component architecture, allowing for the creation of dynamic and reusable components. What are the key features of props? Props are immutable, meaning that they cannot be changed by the component that receives them. Props enable one-way data flow from parent to child. And uh, props allow components to be customized and reused uh, with different inputs. Let's go to the code. In functional components, props are passed as an argument to the function. Let's add some props for our welcome component. And, uh, we can add prop name and just provide some name like John. And now we can modify our welcome component and uh, use our props object 
and from that object we can use curly braces and we'll have props name let's check as you can see we have our name here and uh, let's add some props to our to-do list uh, i can add some i don't know title and uh, use our h2 text as prop and also we can add for example some task like next js and uh, let's use them inside our component we can use props and uh, inside props we'll have our title and uh, so we can add one more task just using our props and props task and let's check as you can see we have our to the list and uh, our new task now i want to show you the structure in props uh, this technique uh, is commonly used uh, in projects and uh, we can use object destructuring and just write name and uh, remove this props and uh, i will do the same for our to the list i'll use only title and task and uh, i can remove this prop and here and uh, let's check what we have and uh, as you can see nothing was changed on the ui and uh, that's all what i have if uh, you like the video subscribe to my dev app channel hi everyone in this lesson we'll dive into react hooks focusing on the use state hook i will also demonstrate how to use conditional rendering and event handling in react what are react hooks react hooks are functions that allow you to use state and other react features in functional components what are the basic rules of react hooks hooks should only be called at the top level of react function this means you should not call hooks inside loops conditions or nested functions this ensures that hooks are called in the same order each time a component renders maintaining the correct state hooks should only be called from react functional components or custom hooks they should not be called from regular javascript functions custom hooks should start with the word use to make it clear that they follow the rules of hooks this is not enforced by react but it's widely accepted convention one of the most frequently used hooks is use state the use state hook allows to add state variables to functional components making it easier to track and update state over the component's life cycle let's build the code with use state hook uh, let's take a look at the design and uh, what are we going to build we'll have uh, an input and uh, a button for adding new task if uh, the value is empty and the uh, user presses the button uh, then he will see a message please enter a valid task and now i'm going to provide some input and press a task and uh, as you can see the value of next.js was added into our task list let's go to the code i opened my visual studio code and uh, have to-do list component uh, that we implemented in the previous lesson and uh, now i'm going to add input and button for adding new task and, uh, let me add some diff and uh, add class name class name will be row add task and uh, inside diff will be input input with type text and so we'll have button button and uh, i'm going to add text add task and uh, for input we can add some placeholder and uh, it will show text uh, if uh, the user haven't provided any values placeholder will be enter enter a new task let's check what i have as you can see we have our input and uh, our button add task and uh, i'm going to add some styles fix this class name and just copy paste and provide styles inside my to-do list css and uh, first of all i need styles for my class row add task 
and uh, I'm going to make it display flex and uh, also add some background background color will be gray something like that and uh, also we can add border radius such as pixels and uh, add some fading left one ram and also add margin from button 1.5 ram now i can add styles for my input it will be row add task and input and uh, use type text it will be our input and provide styles i'm going to make it flex one to take all available space and uh, the button will take its own space and uh, also remove all borders border will be none and also the outline will be none and uh, make background color transparent to use our row add task background color and add some padding one ram for top and bottom and zero for left right and also increase font size 1.3 rm now we can add uh, our styles to button it will be row add task button button and provide styles i'm going to make it padding 0 0.7 rem and 1.5 rem and make some background color like blue something like that and also color for text make it white and uh, remove border border none and to increase font size 1.2 rem and also we can add some border radius 40 pixel and uh, make cursor pointer let's check what i have as you can see styles were changed and uh, we can add hover to our button and you can just copy paste the styles and uh, add hover pseudo class hover and uh, set background color below and make it hack let's check again as you can see background color was changed and uh, we can press some text here but nothing happens when i press the button and uh, we can add our functionality to react code now i'm going to add your state hook into my code use state and uh, as you can see import was added import your state from react and uh, as you know your state uh, is a function and uh, as you can see it uh, returns a stateful value and a function to update it and uh, also we can provide initial state and for initial state i'll provide empty string and uh, we'll use uh, this hook uh, to store value of our input and uh, adjust uh, the input value if a uh, user changed something and uh, i'm going to create two variables and uh, it will be input value input value and uh, the second variable will store function that will modify the value and name will be set input value and i need to assign and uh, now i can add to my input value and take value from our use state hook and it will be input value and uh, i can add some event handler to on change and um, i'm going to provide handle input change and uh, implement this this function i'm going to implement this handle input change and uh, it will be arrow function that will take event uh, this uh, event uh, will be passed uh, inside our function and uh, 
I'm going to use event target value to get value of our input element and uh, this uh, value I'll uh, set inside uh, our input value state and event target target and value. And uh, now we can add event handler to our button and uh, our we need to unclick unclick event handler and uh, I'm going to provide function and the add task task and uh, implement this function also use arrow function and for now let's just add console lock input value and see what we have and uh, I'm going to open my developer tools and uh, provide some task and press add task and uh, as you can see we have our task in console and uh, now we can check if uh, we haven't provided input value uh, then we can show the alert just alert and uh, please enter enter a valid task and uh, if we have a value then we can set input value to empty string and uh, now i need some new state for my task and uh, i'm going to save uh, the input value inside task and add my task uh, to jsx using conditional rendering and uh, i'm going to create one more use state and uh, it will return me state of my task and the uh, function to modify task will be set task and uh, assign and uh, if a uh, user provided our uh, input value we can add set task to our uh, input value and uh, I can remove this console lock and uh, let's check what we have so far. I'm going to add task and nothing changed uh, but uh, the input uh, was cleaned and uh, now uh, I'm going to just press add task and uh, we see our please enter our lead task and uh, now we can add our task uh, to our existing task. I can add some container for my task. And now I'm going to use uh, conditional rendering and uh, use uh, curly braces and check if we have task. Then uh, we can render some JSX. If uh, we don't have task or it's empty value, then the JSX will not be rendered. And let me provide some JSX here. It will be just this, this, and close this. And uh, I'm going to add class name task row, task row. And uh, inside uh, this, I will provide value of my task from state. Let's check what I have. I'm going to add not JS. And add task and uh, as you can see task was added i can close this console and uh, now i can add task again we see our please enter a valid task and uh, as you can see the task was disappeared uh, because um, inside code we set task to empty value and the code checks uh, the task and this as it uh, it's empty and uh, does not render our jsx and uh, let's check the whole functionality. I'm going to refresh page and press add task and see my please enter a valid task. And now I can add not JS and press add task. And uh, as you can see, we have our task uh, here. And uh, that's all what I have. If you liked the video, subscribe to my dev web app channel. Hi everyone. When developing a React application, choosing the right data structure is crucial for maintaining clean, efficient, and scalable code. In this lesson, we'll explore how to use an array of objects in React.
to manage our list of tasks by building our to-do list application. So, for our project, we'll use an array of objects as the data structure. Each object represents a to-do item with three properties. ID, a unique identifier for the task. Task, a string describing the task. Completed, a boolean indicating whether the task is completed. What are the main advantages of using array of objects in React? The first advantage is that array of objects allows to organize data in a structured way, where each object can contain multiple related properties. The second advantage is scalability. It's straightforward to scale the application by adding more properties to each task object if needed. The third advantage is easy of iteration and manipulation. React makes it easy to iterate over arrays using JavaScript's built-in array methods like map filter. Let's take a look at the design. In the previous lesson, we created element for adding a new task. It has input and button. In this lesson, we'll use this element to add task and we'll display the added task. Let me add several tasks. One, two, three, four, five. And in addition, we'll implement delete task functionality. So I removed several tasks. Let's go to the code. I opened the code from the previous lesson and uh, if you remember, we used a string uh, for adding new task and uh, now we are going to use array of objects and uh, i'm going to change name to to do's and also set to do's and uh, initially it will be empty empty array and uh, now we can change our handle add task we can remove this set task and uh, we can create new object and uh, i'm going to create const new to do and uh, it will be object and uh, it has structure id and uh, for id i'm going to use script and uh, random uu id as you can see this function is available only in secure context and uh, may not work in some browsers uh, but uh, the main goal of uh, this function is to provide us some uu id and uh, you can use some library or create own function but in learning purposes i just use this available function and uh, next we'll have task with our input value from our input and uh, state and uh, for new task we'll have completed complete completed false because uh, task cannot be completed and uh, now we can add our to do's Set to do's and uh, it will be array and uh, I'm going to copy previous to do's using uh, this uh, array destructor and uh, add my new to do to that array. Yeah. We have our created to do inside our to do's array and uh, I'm going to make console log and uh, check my new to do what we have inside it. But first, we need to remove this old JSX code because it might provide some errors. And uh, let's check. I'm going to refresh it and uh, task and uh, open my developer tools. We have object completed false ID uh, was generated by crypto library. And we have, uh, we need to check, change and change to task. And, uh, let's try again two and what we have we have id completed false task and for the sort okay and uh, now we can show our tasks uh, inside uh, our component our to-do component and uh, provide some jsx and uh, i'm going to use curly braces and uh, uh, map function of uh, arrays and uh, instead we have our to-dos array and uh, we can use map javascript function and uh, for each to do i'm going to provide some jsx uh, it will be array of uh, jsx code and uh, react uh, will generate uh, this uh, array and uh, first of all i need to add some div for uh, it will be container for our to do's and add some class name and uh, class name will be task list and uh, 
for each to do, I can return return from JSX and uh, initially it will be div div uh, with class name class name will be task row task row close the div and uh, we can provide our to do in curly braces to do task I'm going to save and check what we have okay we have uh, our task but uh, we have uh, this warning that uh, each child in a list should have a unique key and uh, as unique key uh, we can use our id and uh, i'm going to provide uh, this key and uh, to my task row just add key and uh, provide my to do id and uh, react uh, will use this key uh, after rendering a rendering and uh, it will keep uh, the state of component and uh, help uh, react with uh, some performance and, uh, let's check again i'm going to refresh it all at some tasks and uh, as you can see our tasks were added here and uh, now we can add some delete functionality and uh, some classes okay we have our class name task row and uh, we can adjust uh, it uh, to add a completed and uh, we'll use this completed uh, later in our code i'm going to add code here and provide task row and uh, we can use variable and uh, to do completed and uh, if uh, the task is completed then we can add completed class name completed class name if a task was not completed then we just uh, return empty stream uh, and uh, also we need to add button and uh, i'm going to add div uh, to my task and, uh, to add some class name and uh, it will be task text and uh, close this and uh, now we can add button button with class name class name delete button delete button and uh, we can add on click event on click event and uh, add event handler uh, but uh, we need to provide our id to know which task should be deleted and uh, I'm going to implement function handle delete task and provide our to do ID. And now we can implement that function. It will be our function. And uh, as parameter, we paste our ID. And uh, I'm going to use uh, delete ID to not confuse to my tasks id to do id and i uh, just uh, provide some code and uh, i'm going to use arrays filter function to create new array and it will be new tasks and uh, i'm going to filter my to do's use filter function because to do's uh, is an array and uh, for each to do uh, i'm going to check if to do id uh, not equals to our deleted id and uh, all to do's uh, that uh, have id uh, that is not equal to our delete id will be in new tasks array and now i can set this uh, new tasks array to our to do's using our set to do's function and update our state and uh, let's check what we have as you can see we have our button and uh, we can provide some text to our button just x okay we have our text and uh, as you can see pressing the button uh, removes uh, the task to do from the array and uh, i can add more tasks and uh, now we can adjust our styles first of all I'm going to add styles for my task row. It's a class. And uh, 
I will make it display flex and to also make align items center and to we need some plating it will be 0 0.3 RAM for top button and 0 0.5 RAM for left right and also margin will be 0 0.2 for all sides and uh, I'm going to add border border button border button one pixel solid gray and use this hex color and uh, now we can add styles for our text it will be task scroll and we have our task text inside our task row and uh, i will place flag one to take all available space and button and other elements will take its own space and add some margin left to one rem and uh, you can make text align by left and uh, increase font size one dot three rem and uh, now i can add styles for my delete button it has class delete button and uh, I'm, I'm going to change background color to some red color using hex and uh, also make color for text white and uh, add border now add some paintings well, something like that and one ram and uh, also set border radius to 5 pixels and increase font size to 1.5 ram and make cursor cursor pointer and uh, we need save the class hover to change background color it will be hover save the class and uh, just change background color to some red some other red something like that and uh, let's check the whole functionality i'm going to refresh it close console and uh, add several tasks as you can see styles were changed uh, we have uh, this uh, border button and uh, also styles for our delete button and uh, hovering over the button is uh, changing the color and uh, i'm going to press delete and uh, the items are deleted and i can add more items okay everything is working as expected and uh, that's all that i have hi everyone in this lesson i will continue building our to-do list application by adding the functionality to toggle task completion this means we will be updating the state to reflect whether a task has been marked as completed or not to achieve this we will need to modify a property of an object within our state array let's take a look at the design from the previous lessons we have our add task element and uh, i can add several tasks one two three four five and uh, in this lesson we will add the toggle functionality and a checkbox to each row now i'm going to click on a row and uh, as you can see the checkbox and css styles for this row were changed pressing on the row again Return the checkbox and styles to the initial state. Let's go to the code. I opened my Visual Studio code and uh, have a code uh, that we implemented on previous lessons. And uh, if you remember, we have uh, to do's array of objects and uh, we use uh, JavaScript map, map function to uh, go over our to do's and uh, generate a JSX for each to do. And now I'm going to add uh, input uh, and uh, it will be checkbox for each to do and uh, let me do it uh, the checkbox will be placed uh, inside task list container uh, it will be input input with type checkbox checkbox and uh, we have our to do completed uh, property inside of object and uh, it will define our checked uh, attribute 
in our checkbox. And uh, I'm going to assign to our to do completed. And uh, also, we need some on change function. And uh, I'm going to implement function to go to do completion. But initially, I'm going to add on change event and to handle it, uh, I'll provide my function uh, to go to go to do completion and uh, pass my to do ID to know which uh, to do we should uh, to go and uh, similar uh, event I'm going to add to my task text text but uh, it will be on click event just on click okay and now we need to implement this uh, toggle to do completion function it will be arrow function const and uh, it will have a uh, to do id as parameter and uh, we need to implement code and, uh, i'm going to create new to do and i use my uh, map javascript map function we have our array of objects in to do state but, uh, i'll add map and uh, for each to do for each to do we will implement the function and uh, we need to check if current to do id equals provided to do id uh, then we need to toggle completed property and uh, we return new object and uh, using object destructuring i'll provide to do and uh, change completed state to, to just toggle the previous state completed and uh, it should uh, return our new object with uh, changed uh, completed state and uh, if uh, our to do id is not equals uh, to provided to do id then we just return to do and uh, inside new to do's uh, will be previous to do's uh, but uh, for provided to do id completed state will be toggled and uh, now i can set this to do's set to do's we have state function that uh, change uh, the state and i'm going to add new to do's and uh, we can change this new tasks to new to do's and handle delete task and we can change also handle delete to do because uh, we remove to do completely and also here and uh, i'm going to save and uh, let's check what we have as you can see we have our input and uh, i'm going to press on the row and uh, as you can see the stars were changed uh, because uh, we have uh, inside um, our code this check if uh, to do completed then we provide completed uh, style to our task row and uh, inside our to-do list we have uh, text decoration line through and uh, call all that uh, text and uh, uh, pressing again uh, also makes it uh, unchecked and uh, returns the state uh, but we need to modify state uh, like uh, modify styles to change background color and uh, make this checkbox bigger and also as you can see we have delete button also crossed uh, but uh, we don't need this behavior and uh, let's change the styles as you can see we have our styles for completed class but uh, i'm going to add uh, here our task text to apply styles only to our text and not cross our delete button yeah, i'm going to add class name task, task text so let's check as you can see we don't have crossed delete button and uh, now we can add uh, styles for our task row to change our background color and also task row and uh, if it has 
completed class, uh, then background color will be something like that. And um, we can add styles to hovering over the scroll. And I'm going to use the scroll and uh, hover fill the class. Fill the class and add background color like that and uh, make cursor pointer and let's check as you can see background color was changed and uh, hovering over row also changes the background color so i can add more tasks delete some and select and click on checkbox and uh, we need to make the checkbox bigger and uh, I'm going to use my task row. It's a class, task row. And uh, inside this row, we have input. And uh, we have only one input, input. And I will just add input inside task row and uh, use transform and scale function and in increase my checkbox by 1.5 let's check okay we have our increased checkbox and now i can refresh all and add some tasks to check the whole functionality okay i press and uh, the text i can add video text and uh, the text was crossed and uh, checkbox, checkbox was checked and we can remove task and uncheck and uh, that's all that I have. If you like the video, subscribe to my Dev Web App channel. Hi everyone. In this lesson, we will deploy our to-do list application to GitHub Pages. After deploying, you can share your work with the world. As you know, the app was created using Vita Frontend Tooling. I prepared a short guide in my readme file. I will push it with the code to GitHub and you can check it if needed. Now I'm going to follow the guide and push and deploy my code. As you can see, the first item is a create a GitHub account and install Git. If you don't have a GitHub account, sign up and install Git on your computer. Uh, the second point is uh, create a new repository. And uh, I opened my browser, signed in into my GitHub account, and now I'm going to create a new repository by pressing a new button. And uh, I need to provide repository name. It will be to do list and uh, make it public and now i can press create repository and uh, as you can see git proposed me comments and now i'm going to run them one by one and uh, the first comment git init and uh, i need to open terminal and uh, run this comment git init and uh, the next comment is git add and uh, I'm going to add all files that I have in repository. And uh, the next command, git commit. And uh, I'll change the commit message. Like to do a list up. The next, the next command is to create a new main branch. Okay, I'm in the main branch. And now I can add remote at origin. And uh, the next comment will be git push. Okay, the changes were pushed. And uh, we have our code inside the repository. Now I can decrease this terminal size. And uh, the next comment is configure the Vita config.js file. And uh, I need to add base and uh, provide my repository name and uh, place it in vitaconfig.js and base and uh, my repository name is to-do list uh, as we said during the creating the repository okay i have base and uh, the next uh, install github pages just run command npm install github pages inside dev dependencies and uh, they should be installed and uh, the next step is update package json provide home page 
I need to place it inside my package JSON, and uh, as you can see, GitHub pages are installed, and we have dependency inside our package JSON. And uh, I'm going to add home page, and uh, it will be just I can just copy paste this uh, from my browser, or you can write it manually. Uh, and the next step, okay, I have read, and uh, I need to add home here. And uh, the next step, add uh, pre-deploy and deploy script to package JSON. Just add this commands to script to my script. We have several scripts, and uh, I'm going to add two more. Okay, we have our commands, and the next step, just run deploy. And uh, let me run this command, and then run deploy. I'm going to increase the size. And uh, as you can see, build was started and uh, it finished. And uh, we have uh, our code published. And uh, let's check what I have. I'm going to open actions. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, active action. And uh, process was started. And uh, I can push my changes to the main branch. Git add, add all, and provide some comment message. Git commit message at deploy config and just push git push and uh, the changes should be pushed to the main branch and uh, we have our built and deploy and uh, as you can see everything was green and uh, i can open my link and uh, we have our to-do list application available online and uh, you can share this link I'll provide the link uh, to my video description and you can check it. And you can do it uh, with uh, any application. And uh, create the application that was created with Vita. And uh, you can upload the code and share it. And uh, one more thing uh, that uh, you can go to settings and uh, check default branch inside uh, GitHub pages. We have pages and uh, you can as you can see branch was changed to github pages and uh, we can deploy from that branch if you want a fully automated process uh, you probably need to create some action and uh, add workload on pull uh, but uh, it's, uh, it is more complex solution and for small applications uh, you can just use this approach that uh, i demonstrated that's all that I have. If you like the video, subscribe to my Dev Web App channel. Hi everyone. In this lesson, we will add storing functionality to our to-do list application created in previous lessons. We will learn how to store complex data structures in local storage. For that, we will work with React Hook Use Effect, Handling JSON, and uh, Local Storage Web API. First, let's take a look at our app deployed to GitHub pages in the previous lesson. I opened the app in my browser and now I'm going to add several tasks. And uh, when I refresh the page, the items are lost and we need the functionality to store them. But first, let's talk about use effect hook. What is use effect hook in React? The use effect hook is used to perform side effects in functional components. Side effects are operations that affect the outside world or require cleanup such as fetching data from an API, subscribing to events, manipulating the DOM, or setting up timers. Let's take a look at the syntax of use effect hook. I opened my Visual Studio code and have a project that we implemented in previous lessons. And uh, I'm going to add hook use effect. And uh, as you can see, it, uh, we need to provide effect callback. Uh, it will be a function. And uh, also we can provide Depth uh, dependency list array, and I'm going to add empty function as it will return something, and I uh, will write code later, and uh, also will provide dependency array. And uh, as you can see, import was added, import use effect from React. Let's talk about key concepts of use effect hook. By default, use effect runs after every render. The optional second argument to use effect is an array of dependencies. The effect will only rerun if one of the dependencies changes. If you pass empty array, 
the effect will only run once after the initial render. The function pass to use effect can return a cleanup function. We'll use local storage in our application. What is local storage in JavaScript? Local storage is a web API that allows you to store data in the browser persistently. Data stored in local storage doesn't expire and can be accessed even after the browser is closed and reopened. It's a simple key value store. Local storage allows you to store data in string format, but we have an array of objects and we need to use JSON. What is JSON? JSON is a data format and we will use JSON stringify method to convert a JavaScript object or value to a string and a JSON parse to parse a JSON string constructing the JavaScript value or object described by the string. Uh, let's take a look at our code. We have uh, our added use effect and uh, now I'm going to save to do's into local storage when they change. And uh, I'm going to provide function and uh, just add local storage. It's a global JavaScript object. And uh, I need set item. And uh, as you can see, I need to provide string key. It will be just to do. And uh, value. And uh, for value, I'm going to use JSON and uh, create string uh, by using stringify. It will be string for my to do array of objects. And uh, I need to add dependency. We are going to store to do's only when uh, they were changed. Okay, and uh, let's take a look at uh, what we have in our application. I'm going to open my developer tools and uh, go to application folder and select local storage. And I'm going to refresh the page and uh, add several items. And uh, as you can see, uh, the to do's were changed. And uh, inside uh, our local storage, we have three items. And uh, I can add more or change some value. And uh, let's, let's check. And uh, as you can see, completed state was changed. And uh, so I can remove one item. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, the exact uh, values uh, in our local storage. But when I refresh the page, my to do are gone and uh, I see only empty array in my local storage. And uh, let's fix it. And uh, let's try to understand what happens. And uh, refresh uh, provides initial value to empty uh, as empty array and uh, use effect uh, sees that to do were changed and uh, just put them. Uh, put empty array in my to do's and uh, let's add one more use effect but uh, we'll run it only once and uh, i'm going to add empty array as dependency and uh, uh, this uh, use effect will display our to do's and uh, also block uh, the refresh and uh, we need to store our to do's inside some variable start to do and uh, i'm going to use our local storage object and get item and i need to provide only key and the uh, key i have to do and uh, i need to check if we have stored to do uh, then i will set uh, this to do inside our state variable but uh, we need to use json parse uh, because we stored to do as a json string and uh, we need to parse them to get our array of objects and uh, stored to do uh, but we have the problem with uh, the this initial state and uh, as you saw it uh, stores uh, the empty array and uh, now i'm going to add uh, one more state variable to check uh, if uh, the to do so were loaded or not. Const loaded and function will be set to loaded and use state. And uh, initially it will be false. Uh, and uh, after we 
run this use effect first time, I'm going to set loaded to true and uh, show that we can use uh, store our to do's into local storage. But uh, if uh, they, this uh, hook was uh, not executed and uh, we have initial state, I'm going to just return from that use effect. Just check if not loaded, then return. And let's check what we have in the application. I'm going to refresh page and provide several items. Okay, I have please enter a valid task and uh, also it shows me empty stream and now I'm going to fix it. I just need to add return here to avoid such behavior. And now I'm going to refresh it again, remove, refresh and add more items. And uh, as you can see, now the item, empty item was not added. And uh, let me refresh the page. And uh, as you can see, we have the same values as in, in our local storage. And I can mark completed several items and refresh again. Okay, and uh, I can remove some items and refresh again. And uh, it works. And uh, now I can just push my changes and uh, deploy them to github and uh, as we did in previous lesson and i'm going to open new terminal and uh, run my npm run deploy command you can check my previous video to have understanding uh, how i deploy uh, my application and uh, now i'm going to open uh, my project on github and uh, take a look at the actions and uh, action was executed successfully and uh, i can open my project on github refresh page and to provide several tasks and to refresh again and uh, i can open developer tools and go to application and now i have uh, my github address and check what we have i can mark as completed and uh, as you can see completed uh, is true here and add more items like new task and now refresh the page and uh, everything is working. And uh, that's all that I have. Hi everyone. In this lesson, we'll refactor our code by splitting our to-do list component into small components. We'll learn how to share state between components by lifting it up. What is code refactoring? Code refactoring is the process of restructuring existing code without changing its external behavior. The primary goals are to improve code readability, reduce complexity, enhance maintainability. One of the key principles of React development is to break down the UI into small, reusable components. This practice promotes code reusability, maintainability, and readability. We will divide our large to-do list component into small components. In React, state is often shared among multiple components that need to access or modify it. To manage this, state is typically kept in the closest common ancestor of the components that need it. The ancestor component then passes down the state and any functions to update the state as probes. This approach is known as lifting state up. Let's go to our code and refactor it. I opened my Visual Studio code and uh, have my to-do list component. And uh, as you can see, here are lots of code. And uh, now I'm going to split uh, the code into small components. And uh, first of all, I'm going to open my terminal. And uh, currently I'm in the main branch. And uh, I'll create the new branch, git branch. And uh, it will be git checkout, new branch. And uh, it will be 10, 9 refactoring okay uh, i check out my new branch and now i can start my dev server npm run dev and to open my application i will check my application to make sure i didn't break anything okay now i can hide this and uh, now i will create component for adding task 
and uh, place this uh, code inside my component and uh, all functions and uh, provide my state and function to change uh, the state as we learned previously. So I'm going to create my add to do component add to do JSX and uh, also I need add to do CSS for my styles. And uh, inside my component, uh, I'm going to create function function add to do and uh, provide some JS box return and uh, copy paste in JSX from my to do list. I'll just copy this. Okay, and uh, I can export my component, export as default, default add to do. And uh, inside my to do list, I can import the component, import and add to do. And now I can place it here instead of the code add to do. And uh, later I will provide my props. But first, uh, let's check what we need to add. Uh, as you can see, we don't have input value uh, on change and uh, on click. Uh, okay, and uh, now I'm going to remove this state from our to do list component and uh, pass it into my add to do component. Uh, it will manage the state locally and uh, so I need some props and functions. We have input value and now I'm going to copy paste these functions like handle add task and handle on change. I'm just removing them here and past here. Okay, and uh, as you can see, we need to do it uh, was in the state in our to do list component, and uh, also we need set to do, and uh, we'll provide uh, this uh, state uh, inside our props. And, uh, I'm going to add to do and pass to do from my state, and uh, also we need set to do, and uh, it's a function that uh, changes the state, and I'll provide it as well. Okay, and now I can go to my component and check we have handle input change, handle add task, and also handle uh, also input value. And now I can copy paste my styles. Uh, let's check what I have for styles. Row add task, and uh, I need uh, all styles that related to row add task. Okay, row add task, row all the states. And pass them here. And so let's check again. We have this style. And uh, I'll also copy paste it to my add to do style. Okay, and now I, I need to import my styles in, into my JSX import. Um, Add to do CSS and uh, let's check what we have. Okay, we have some errors and uh, I'm going to open my developer tools and check your state is not defined. Okay, we need to import your state. As you can see, your state import was added. Let's check again. Okay, we have our states. I'm going to remove some and add. And uh, add doesn't work because set to do is not defined. And uh, we passed uh, to do into props, but uh, we haven't uh, checked it here. And uh, we need to retrieve uh, these props here. And uh, I'm using object destructoring, just provide names to do and 
set to do. Okay, we have our to do's and uh, function to modify state uh, in our props. And uh, let's check again. I'm going to refresh and uh, add new task. And uh, as you can see, task was added. And, uh, I can remove this console log. Uh, it was some debugging problem. Let me check it again. Refresh. Delete. Add. Everything is working, and uh, now we can add our next component. And uh, for next component, uh, I'm going to add to do and uh, place inside the to do all this code. Okay, and uh, the new component will be to do to do JSX and also styles to do CSS and. Uh, I, I can create also a function, function to do, and uh, return JSX, and uh, JSX I'll copy paste from my to do list. It will be that. And we can remove this. Okay, and uh, now I can add export, export default to do, and uh, import my to do, the my to do list. Import to do, and paste it here, just to do, and uh, Component to do of course. And uh, we need uh, props. We definitely will need to do to do and, uh, to do from map. Uh, let's check what we have also. We have uh, this to go to do completion function and handle delete to do that will change uh, the to do state. And uh, the next function will be handle delete to do. We have uh, this function in our code, and uh, I'm going to keep uh, this function here and uh, just provide uh, them inside my to do component. And uh, also, we need to Retrieve the props here using object destructoring and uh, we pass to do and also functions to go to the completion and handle delete to do. Okay, and uh, let's check what we have. Okay, we have some errors. Let's check the code to see what's wrong. Okay, everything looks good here and let's check our to do list component. Okay, I need to replace this curly braces with just braces and uh, return just x because uh, i returned some uh, function okay and let's check again okay we have our to do's and let me add some to do's and uh, it's working and we have a child in a list should have a unique key and uh, that's because uh, we need to add key to our to do let me just provide key and uh, it will be our to do id to do id and uh, we can remove key from that this div okay and uh, we can simplify a bit our code using object destructoring and uh, provide your cons and just uh, distract all these completed tasks and uh, ID from our to do. Completed task and ID from our to do. And uh, we can remove this to do. And uh, I'm going to just replace it with empty values. Okay. And uh, let's check what we have. I'm going to refresh the page 
uh, this uh, warning is gone and add some items remove change the state and uh, everything looks good you can close this console and add more items and now we can move our styles from to do list css and actually we can move all styles to our to do css we have double task row styles probably we don't need the first one and uh, now we need to import our styles okay and let's check as you can see we have our styles here refresh again again and add some new task and uh, now i can remove this this css file just removed and also remove this import and uh, we have some container class probably we can remove it also and this task list okay and uh, as you can see we have uh, less code here and uh, use smaller components also uh, if you want you can place this into a separate component and uh, lift uh, the state up and uh, place this functions inside that component but i'm not going to do it uh, our code looks nicer now and uh, let's check that uh, everything is working i'm going to refresh the page remove several items okay i can remove them all and add new and mark as completed add complete refresh and everything is working if uh, you liked the video subscribe to my dev web app channel like the video thank you for watching goodbye